Next week, we're going to talk about how the Lord defines courage. But today, I just want to talk about courage to be baptized. And I want to read Acts. Last week, or two weeks ago, we read Acts 25 through 40. Today, we're just going to read verses 35 through 39. This is the story of Philip coming up upon the Ethiopian eunuch's chariot. So he worked for the queen uh, in uh, Ethiopia. And um, yeah, so Philip opened his mouth and from the scripture preached Jesus to this Ethiopian eunuch. That's verse 35. As they went along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, water. What prevents me from being baptized? What a great question. What prevents me from being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. In other words, if you are a believer, we baptize believers. We don't baptize unbelievers. We don't baptize babies. We baptize those who have said yes to Jesus, right? It's just so simple. And the, and the eunuch answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. In other words, you've convinced me. Like, I'm convinced when you talk to me about Isaiah 53, I'm, I'm there. And so... The Bible says that he ordered the chariot to stop. They both went down into the water, Philip as well as the eunuch, and he baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, so he was transported, and the eunuch no longer saw him, but went on his way rejoicing. Kind of had a hallelujah whatever. You know, I don't know where Philip went, but praise God, I'm baptized, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, I know you, God, I have a relationship with you. So I wanna just share three things about baptism and about courage, really, because courage is the foundation of baptism. Like, it takes guts to be baptized. How many of you know that? We, we did uh, baptisms, uh, I was with David Hogan and some other people. This is when Cheryl and I finished our harvest school. So it was some years ago, honey. What year was that? 2016, so it was four years ago. And I mean, the power of God was hitting people. They were just like, they were, the anointing was just, they were dropping like stones before they were ready, to, before they were ready to get baptized, they just fall over in the spirit. And they came up with such glory and such power. I just wanna encourage you to believe for something amazing right now. Because it's a, it's like communion. Communion is a, it's a symbol, but it's also a mystery. Like when we take communion, there, it's infused with the presence and power of God. Does that make sense? There's a mystery in it. It's like, it's, 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 a, it's a symbol, but it's a mystery. Baptism is a symbol, but it's a mystery. And my prayer today is that these kids, this would rock their worlds. They would start having radical encounters with Jesus and ne- life would never be the same. So let me just talk to you about this passage and about baptism altogether. Number one, courage means the willingness to ask questions. I love that this guy asked this question. What prevents me from being baptized? Let's just... Would you repeat after me? What prevents me? Oh, that was pathetic. Let's try it again. What prevents me? Okay, that was good, but just a little bit louder. What prevents me from being baptized? So if you're a believer here today and you've never been baptized, what prevents you from being baptized? If you're not a believer and you want to give your heart to Jesus, what prevents you from being baptized? There's nothing that prevents you except sometimes obstacles in our own minds, but there is no barrier. You can be baptized today, amen? The entire miraculous story that we read in Acts 8 happened because this guy asked questions. The first question he asked is he said, hey, this passage in Isaiah, is he talking about himself or someone else? So he started asking questions, and as he asked questions, life started unfolding for him, and he got saved and baptized because he asked questions. If he wouldn't have asked Philip, hey, what prevents me from being baptized? He may not have gotten baptized right then. It's just so awesome, the power of humbling ourselves and asking questions, asking for help, asking others who know more than we do. This is an age where we need to be aware that that with this great harvest is going to come great discipleship. And with great discipleship means we need to ask other people stuff that we don't know. To be a disciple is to be a learner. And so I just want to say that Courage begins by asking questions. People who are know-it-alls have no courage at all because they're hiding behind their knowledge. Nobody knows everything. But people that are know-it-alls act like they know everything because they don't want to be vulnerable and they don't want to have to humble themselves. And I just want to say to you, to have guts means that you ask questions. How many of you are asking questions right now? 
If you're in COVID-19, if you're in America during racial tension, you have to be asking questions. There's really important questions you need to be asking. We have an election coming up. You've got to be asking yourself some serious questions. We're going to get to that. We're going to talk about the courage to talk about politics in a few weeks. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. It's going to be so good. Woo! And I might make some of you mad. Oh, I will, my friend. Number one, courage means asking questions. Number two, courage means asking a particular question. And the particular question is, why not? Have you know there's two types of people in the world? Those who ask why and those who ask why not? Which do you think is the majority? The why people. Lots of people are willing to say why. Why should I do that? Why should I do that? Why should I have to go here? Why should I have to? There's a, not as many people that say why not? What, what's, why can't I do that? What would prevent me from doing that? What's the problem with that? There's not that many possibility thinkers. There's a lot of problem thinkers. Hello? Which are you? Are you a problem thinker or a possibility thinker? It's not wrong to deal with problems as long as you don't get stuck in the problem, you deal with the problem. But there are some people who are forever thinking about what could go wrong, what's bad about it, what's gonna be, what's messed up, why it's not perfect. And how many of you know Ecclesiastes 11.4 says, if you wait for perfect conditions, you'll never get anything done. Like waiting for perfect conditions will cancel every plan. You'll never get anything done if you wait for perfection. There's a, there is no perfection. Why not? Why can't we have baptisms in the parking lot? Why can't we keep meeting outdoors till the weather changes? Why can't we go indoors once the weather changes? That's gonna give you a controversial one. It's gonna be so exciting. <laughs> My question to you is that the, the Bible offers two types of people, the common and the courageous. The common people, it, it talks about in 2 Timothy 2, it says, now, in a house, there are different kinds of vessels. There are base vessels or vessels of dishonor, and there are vessels of honor. In other words, there's the fine china, and then there's the dirty bowl that's plastic that has tons of scratches on it. And you can be either one to the Lord. You can choose to be a base vessel, which means he'll use you for his lowest purposes. Those are the why people. The why people often get used for the lowest purposes. Like God's like, hey, I need someone to take out the trash. Would you do it? And I'm not putting down anyone who takes out the trash. If you're a trash man or a trash woman, praise, the God, praise God. We love you. We appreciate you. It's not about status. What I'm saying is you and I have a high calling on our lives. We have a destiny, and it's incumbent upon us to fulfill that destiny. And it's up here. And if we don't learn to become the, the people that ask the right kinds of questions, we're going to end up fulfilling baser purposes. And it's okay, you can live in base purposes, but you'll never fulfill your highest calling. And I wanna encourage you right now to ask the right kind of questions to live out your highest level of calling. And the number one right question you can ask is why not? Why can't I do that? Why shouldn't I do that? Now, again, there are people who are foolhardy and they ask that so much that they make big mistakes. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about having a, what the Bible calls a willing spirit. There is such a thing in scripture as what, as what the Bible calls a willing spirit. How many of you have a willing spirit today? You're like, a, you're a yes, not a no. Why is this important? Is this, am, am I preaching personality or scripture? I'm preaching scripture because it says in 1 Corinthians 1, the promises of God, all of them are yes and amen. They're not no and no thank you. They're yes and amen. The promises of God are always a yes, not a no. They're always let's do it, not let's not do it. Again, there's wisdom, of course, but there's a time in the realm of faith to throw caution to the wind. There's a time where you have to be gutsy. In fact, I would say that that needs to be the majority of your life is gutsy. And then there's those moments where the Lord says, no, no, hold on, just wait a second. But risk is a part of a life of faith. You can't live a life of faith without risk. John Wimber used to say, uh, faith is spelled R-I-S-K. You have to choose risk in order to walk in faith. Why? Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. In other words, it's like standing at the high dive in, a, in one of those neighborhood swimming pools and jumping 
with no water in the bottom, believing because of God's promise, he's gonna put water in by the time you hit the water. Like that's faith. There's a risk involved. It, you, there's no assurances. You don't get to go down on a rope and like, ah, oh, there wasn't water. Oh, well, glad I went down on a rope. No, there's no plan B. Risk, faith is risk, and risk is part of the Christian faith. The Bible says without faith, we can't please God. Is anybody hearing this? So courage means asking questions, but courage means asking the right kind of question, which is why not? Why can't we do that? What would prevent us from being baptized? What would prevent us from planting a church? What would prevent us from starting that business or that ministry? Or what would prevent us from taking that trip? What would prevent us from doing that? Why would we not do that? What would prevent us from going after the highest and best for our lives? What would prevent me from reaching my goals? Why do I always sabotage myself? Why do I always talk myself out of things? What will, why not? Why can't I do that? Why do I tell myself, you can't do that? You've been unsuccessful in the past. Why do I talk myself out of that? Why not just go for it? Do you hear the inner dialogue that most people, most of us deal with all the time? We're talking ourselves in and out of things all the time. Courage means asking, why not? Iris is founded on a, on a woman and her husband, but especially a woman who just said, why not? Why not go to one of the darkest countries on earth, one of the poorest countries on earth, with no resources, no money, one-way ticket, and nothing, and no contacts, and let's just see if Jesus is enough. And now they're in 30 countries all over the world, changing the world right now. It's because somebody said, why not? Now, that why not obviously is gonna be based on certain things and I wanna share those with you next week that there are things that God does for us that allow us to enter into faith. So I wanna talk about how God sets us up for courage next week, okay? It'll make a lot more sense when I share with you all the ways that you can step into courage in a biblical manner. But the last thing I just wanna say is that courage means, so courage means asking questions, courage means asking the right kind of question, which is why not, and then courage means baptism. What prevents me from being baptized? Now, I wanna just share this with you. Our culture, the answer in everything with our culture is nothing. Nothing prevents you being baptized, but Philip didn't say that. Did you realize that? He didn't say nothing. He said, if you believe in your heart, if you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is God, you can be baptized. In other words, he gave him a condition. He said, if you want to be baptized, you need to be saved. He didn't mince words. He didn't water it down. He had a prospect right there. Some of us are just trying so hard to be successful that we water things down. Beloved, don't water anything down. Just have the courage to realize that baptism is a decision. Have you know that when you choose Jesus, you could die for your faith? Like, it's, this is an important decision. It's a big deal. And we don't want to live in a world where the gospel is continually watered down until it means absolutely nothing. Like, don't be afraid to preach the real gospel. Hello? And to call people to something that's worth their entire lives, which is Jesus, him crucified, buried, risen, coming again, and with purpose for our lives. Like, worthy to be our leader and worthy to be our Lord, not just our lamb but to have all of our lives, he's worth all of it. Worthy, you are worthy of it all. We sang it today. He actually is worthy of it all. And there's a culture dying to find something worth living for that's worthy of their lives. And we have the answer. His name is Jesus. It's not a religion, it's not a church, it's a person. And we can present him in all of his glory without watering anything down. What prevents me from being baptized? Well, are, have you given your heart to Jesus? Like, don't be afraid to ask the big question to people. Have you given your heart to Jesus? Have you said yes to the Son of God? Is he your savior? Well, if he is, you can definitely be baptized.